Hello, everyone. My name is Susan Gerbic. I was an attendee of SciCon 2023 held in Las Vegas at the Flamingo. And what I am releasing is a video of quick clips from the uh, SciCon event I attended. It'll quickly become apparent that I am not a videographer. I do not make videos um, professionally or even as a hobby, really. And I think that'll become clear in a moment. But what I want to do is uh, give you a flavor of what the conference was like. I just took my iPhone, pointed it at the screen, hit record. And these are things that probably will not be in the major um, videos that will be released by Center for Inquiry. Make sure you subscribe to their channel. They usually start showing up in about January 2024. Bits of it probably will be released, anything that has to do with a lecture. But what I'm doing is releasing a lot of little things that happened on the side that probably won't make it into those videos. The first thing you're going to see, the clip is Stuart Weiss, is a four-second clip. And I filmed this just so that we could see what the room looked like, the attendees, how many people were there. It was the opening talk on Friday at 10 o'clock. And that's Stuart, nine o'clock, I'm sorry. And that is Stuart Weiss. So that's just there for no reason except to show you people what the room looked like. The next thing you should see is a quick clip um, when Mick West, the UFO um, guy, he's about to do a talk at 12 o'clock on Friday. It's called What's Next? The Men in Black. Why the government, why is the government studying UFOs? What happens is George Robb, who's the MC for the event, very talented, very funny man. He usually does some kind of gimmick in intros whenever he's doing these events and what he's going to do for Mick is and well for every speaker that came up is George Rob made up a fake fact and he's just it's a funny fake fact and so all you're going to see in this clip is Mick West getting ready to go up on stage and the quick clip of uh, George Rob making up something introducing uh, Mick West. It's kind of funny. Again, this is something you won't see unless you attend the conference. Um, they don't usually make it onto the um, the final videos that Center for Inquiry will release. I think they're fun. Then after that, you're going to see little clips from a, a panel that was done at four o'clock on Friday. The panel is called Wu in the U, Teaching Rational Skepticism in Higher Ed Education. You're going to see Natalia Pascal Pasternak, who will be speaking. She is um, who you will see talking at the first clip. And then also on that panel are uh, Katie Dyer and Ray Hall. And you're going to see somebody asking a question from the audience. And this is um, Kelly Marin, who asked the question. She's first time attending to PsyCon and everybody loved her question. So, and then followed right after her, opening up for Bill Nye, who's sitting in the second row of the conference, paying great attention to what's going on throughout the whole conference. So it was really neat to have him there. And he stands up and he asks a question of the panel also. And I believe that's all you're going to see in this clip. And I hope you enjoy. Please subscribe to Center for Inquiry for more formal videos. Mine are just me sitting in the audience saying that sounds interesting and pointing my phone at the screen and my hands were going numb. So who knows if it's shaky. I'm not editing this. It's just going out to you raw. I hope you enjoy and enjoy in the flavor of there's nothing professional about this. It's just Susan releasing videos of what it was like to be at PsychOn. So enjoy. Leave me comments. And old, the old man says, oh, I hope no one noticed that there were 13. Damn good question. <laughs> He's a retired software engineer. Uh, he created the site Metabunk, which investigates UFO cases. They use uh, 3D graphics and physics and gaming technology and linear algebra, and they try to debunk all kinds of UFO stuff. And, and uh, Mick owns the copyright to the song Hot Cross Buns. Go figure. <laughs> Please welcome Mick West. Reiki is its hand in position for healing 
and so the the energy of the universe will flow through you and through your hands and then you can heal people you can also do it on the phone um, <laughs> that you have in your study, where are they at in their career and how might that have influenced what they taught? Because being uh, on the tenure track and being like my first course teaching this, I have to be a little cautious of what I'm talking about and who I'm talking to. So like how does that influence what the professors taught? Oh, thank you for the question. <laughs> I have not systematically gone through them all and looked at that, and I will now, because that's a great idea. I will tell you my general impression. Many of them are full professors who are well established at their institution, and this is their passion project that they waited until the end of their careers to do. However, there are several people in this pile who, who represent a very different group. They, they come into the university deeply caring about uh, teaching, and they're ambitious, and they have time, and they have passion, and so uh, so we seem to be sort of bifurcated, in my opinion, probably more on the full professor side. But I will look into it. Thank you for the idea. But, but she awesome. has a very important point there, because uh, uh, I, I lived through a very similar situation to what you described, that you have to be careful about what you talk about in the classroom. Uh, uh, after these, uh, the book that I talked about that has 12 popular pseudosciences in Brazil, one of them is psychoanalysis. It's huge in Brazil. It's like part of our intellectual elite. So uh, it's very, very popular. And there was a chapter about psychoanalysis in my book. And reporters told me, journalists told me that they were having a hard time getting psychology professors to comment on that because psychoanalysis is taught in our psychology schools, in our universities. And most professors who weren't tenured professors were afraid of speaking up. I just, I, I got to teach this class when I, the, almost the semester I got there, and I never really felt that that was threatening my, um, uh, my tenure process. Um, most people just, uh, I had to teach my physics classes and things like that too, but. Uh, uh, it's been a project since day one for me, but I think uh, there is a certain climate right now where no matter what you teach, you're a little bit on trepidation um, with your, when you're on that tenure track path. So I, uh, it'd be interesting to separate out what what may, would teaching rational skepticism be more risky than just teaching your topics that you're supposed to teach. Uh, uh, and then yeah, here I think we have some protection from being in the CSU system, which mandates critical thinking education. Oh, good point. I think that protects faculty of that and other institutions that have that. This is a question for all three of you. Uh, I reacted to your expression uh, the psychology or psychiatry professors were overrepresented. Mm -hmm. And I know the word overrepresented has, uh, can be interpreted two ways. But in hard sciences, as I would call them, chemistry, uh, physics, physical sciences, planetary science, life sciences, History of science is part of the course. You talk about Ptolemy had his idea that the sun went around the earth, just for example. You talk about early ideas of spontaneous generation of what living things. You talk about um, the example in chemistry would be uh, only four elements. And so part of each of those courses uh, is the history of science. Is psychology or psychiatry different? Do professors who go about that not have that historic aspect in it, and is that important? Um, and to me, just one other thing, uh, for me, critical thinking is based on claims. When someone says there's things we don't know, true enough, but uh, ref if I understand this, you guys enlighten me, refutational science is about claims. Somebody claims that homeopathy does such and such. Somebody claims that self-esteem does such and such. Is that part of it or not? Back to you. <laughs> uh, thank you for the questions. And, and just to clarify, psychology specifically almost always requires a class on the history of psychology. So that's, that's almost always part of a, a psychology 
degree. Uh, psychiatry, of course, would be different. That would be medical school, and I don't, I don't know what they do there. But uh, the other social sciences, and I'm in another social science. I'm in human development and family science, and we do not. And we are talking about the fact that we don't do history. And sociology, they do some history, but only in the context of, of particular theories. So I don't know if this is why, it, but, but psychology almost always does have a, a history of psychology class that's required. Uh, I can say something about physics is that the requirement of what we're supposed to teach a pre-med student or say an engineer um, is so wide that we don't have a lot of time to get to historical. So when we do give them a historical, it's kind of a cartoon version of it, and it doesn't show the kind of messy, you know, nonlinear pathways of how we really found these things. Um, so it's a cleaned up version, but nonetheless, we do try to infuse some of that background for sure. Um, this is what was believed before, this was discovered, but it's usually tidied up in a way that gives people a little misimpression about how science really works. It's a bit more messy. Than, than yeah, I think the reason psychology is overrepresented is just that so many psychologists actually study the way people think. Mm -hmm. And so this is just part of the content area of psychology. And I think that really leads psychology programs. That's what I think it's about. Yeah, uh, uh, biology schools in Brazil, they usually teach at least one course in history of science, but it's not about the process of science. It's very factual. So it's about things that happen in the past and you have to memorize to pass the test. Uh, and it's one course only during the whole biology school. Uh, I hardly remember mine and it was a history class. But uh, it's, it's very superficial and it doesn't really dig into the process of science of how discoveries were made as uh, suggested by the colleague back then. It was just about memorizing facts and maybe learning a little bit about history of science itself, uh, maybe famous scientists of the past. It was interesting, but, uh, but it's not, uh, it doesn't help with critical thinking. This, uh, talking about biology school back when I was a student, things probably changed, I hope, but it, it, it was like I was taught like 20 years ago. So uh, I, I didn't have a lot of background in history of science or philosophy of science, sociology of science in biology school. It was really very targeted in biological issues only. So I'd say one thing that I think this group will try to do is try to convince textbook authors to maybe put a little more history in this so they can understand how science really works and also put in some of this reputational uh, approach of what are some pseudosciences to look out for in your field. You're gonna get these questions, here are the answers, we have them for you, and just prime them that way. So I think that's gonna be part of our part of our mission. Excellent, I think with that, have a round of applause for our fantastic panel. Shout out to all the teachers out there as well, I'm to get bike.